Dwayne Chapman skyrocketed to fame in 2004 when his habit of professionally tracking fugitives was chronicled on A&E's Dog the Bounty Hunter. And throughout his difficult life, the TV star has proven over and over again, as he once put it, you can't keep a good dog down. This is the tragic, real-life story of Dog the Bounty Hunter. I said to myself in the mirror, I am going to change and be the best at whatever I do in the world. Having grown up with an admittedly difficult childhood, Dwayne Dog Chapman held nothing back when he described his painful early years in his 2007 autobiography, You Can Run But You Can't Hide. While his home life may have seemed typical from the outside, growing up in a middle-class home in Denver, Colorado with his mom and dad and three siblings, the bail bondsman revealed that this wasn't the reality. He wrote, as a young boy, I never knew that other kids didn't get hit by their dads. I simply didn't know anything different. I was expected to take it like a man, but I wasn't a man. I was a young boy looking for love and approval from my father. My dad has instilled very strong family values in us and has showed me how important it is to be there for your kids as a father. Noting that he vowed to break the cycle of abuse in his own family, Chapman also revealed, Until very recently, I never understood that none of his abuse was my fault and yet I swore that I would never beat my kids. I was not a bounty hunter when we started, and as a matter of fact, I was on the other side of the law. It's safe to say that Chapman's adult life didn't get off to the best start. As reported by the Toronto Star, a 23-year-old Chapman found himself in a world of trouble back in 1976. While living in Texas, the future star was waiting in a car with people while his friend bought marijuana off a dealer. Unfortunately, the drug deal went south and ended with Chapman's friend shooting the dealer dead. Everyone was implicated in the crime. Chapman told the outlet, In Texas in the 70s, if you were present, you were just as guilty. I shouldn't have gone. And I shouldn't have been the person I was back then. Chapman was released on parole after serving 18 months of a five-year prison sentence. But that conviction continued to impact Chapman's life decades later, when he was cast on the UK's version of Celebrity Big Brother and had his visa request denied, barring him from traveling abroad. About his criminal record, Chapman told the Toronto Star, It's something that follows you the rest of your life, no matter who you become or who you are. I'm not proud of it. Chapman's personal life has certainly been a complicated one. According to Entertainment Tonight, Dog has 12 children and has been married five times. But about his son, Christopher Hecht, Chapman told the National Enquirer, Christopher's mom, Debbie White, took her own life in the 70s while I was in a Texas prison doing 18 months. I didn't know I had a son until I got out. While the two formed a relationship after Hecht reached adulthood, Christopher has had a difficult life, struggling with alcohol abuse, legal trouble, and multiple arrests. According to his adoptive mother, he went missing in 2007 after serving a 90-day stint behind bars. While Hecht eventually reappeared, he continued to find himself in trouble. In 2014, Chapman revealed to a tabloid that he and his family had organized an intervention, and Hecht agreed to go to rehab. While Dog was serving his prison sentence in the late 70s, he and his first wife split up. Shortly after his release, Dwayne Chapman married wife number two, Anne M. Tengel, with whom he shares three children, according to Entertainment Tonight. One of them, a baby boy named Zebediah, was born prematurely on January 1, 1980, and sadly passed away just 30 days later. Chapman and Tangle's marriage didn't survive this tragic loss, and the couple divorced. Chapman would go on to get married and divorced two more times before meeting the woman who would become the love of his life, Beth Chapman. The two tied the knot in Hawaii in May 2006. However, their big day was marred by another tragic loss. On the evening before the ceremony, Dwayne received some devastating news. His 23-year-old daughter, Barbara Katie Chapman, had passed away in a car accident near her home in Fairbanks, Alaska. There is a time to mourn, and it's not right now. You think that if God wanted to stop this marriage, he would have killed my baby? As Chapman's publicist told the news outlet, Chapman met with a minister to discuss the best course of action. It was mutually agreed upon that the wedding would go ahead as scheduled while using the reception as a celebration of Barbara's life. In 2011, Chapman was awarded temporary custody of his then nine-year-old grandson, Travis Mims Jr. According to Radar Online, a judge made the decision after hearing a shocking and deeply disturbing audio recording of the boy's father. 
the husband of Chapman's late daughter Barbara, allegedly physically harming the couple's son. As Dog explained to the media outlet, his goal in gaining custody was not to take the child away from his father, but to simply remove the minor from a dangerous situation. He said, I want Travis Sr. to take parenting classes. I was beaten by my father too, but we have to break that cycle. Later telling the tabloid that he was, quote, shocked and heartbroken over the abuse, Chapman revealed that his actions resonated with his late daughter's last words to him. He said, I love my grandson and only want what's best for him. During the last phone call I had with my daughter, Barbara Katie, she said to me, please, daddy, take care of Travis Jr. Don't ever let anything happen to him. Over the course of four days in the spring of 2012, Chapman and his family received menacing emails that contained graphic threats of violence. According to Radar Online, the FBI began investigating the messages that May, which threatened an array of heinous acts against the family. The Chapmans later issued a statement to confirm that the story was indeed true and that the reported threats against their lives were real. It read via E! News, The Chapmans are taking these threats seriously and are very concerned about the safety of their family. Chapman will prosecute to the full extent of the law for the threats made against his family. Speaking to the Today Show with his wife Beth around that time, Dwayne Chapman revealed that they had received a few threats over the course of nine years, but this time it had gone too far. You know, I don't care, go ahead and threaten me and whatever, you know, let's meet at noon, but I don't like when someone threatens my little girls and Beth. Chapman has unfortunately had some rather fraught relationships with some of his children, and that has definitely been the case with daughter Lissa Chapman, who's made headlines over the years for supposedly feuding with late stepmom Beth amid her battle with cancer in 2017 and for slamming her father's alleged girlfriend, Moon Angel, in early 2020. She also made some shocking allegations about her dad back in 2013. At the time when you're young, you don't really realize the bad situation that you're in. According to an excerpt of her autobiography, Walking on Eggshells, Lissa, who's the daughter of Chapman and his third wife, claimed that she saw what she called drug paraphernalia in the family home when she was just five. Alleging that Duane began using serious drugs when she was in the second grade, Lissa wrote, At about this same time, Dad became more and more distracted. And business dropped off significantly. He began smoking a crack pipe like it was a cigarette. Chapman reportedly denied claims of drug use, later saying he didn't even know what crack was. Lissa continued writing, That maybe explains why when Dad first started smoking crack, from my perspective, he never tried to hide it. I didn't dream of being a bounty hunter. I just dreamed of being with a bounty hunter. In 2017, Beth and Dog received some devastating news. Beth had a stage 2 cancerous tumor growing in her throat. As The Blast reported, she underwent a 12-hour surgery that September to remove the tumor, which was seemingly successful. And an A&E special, Dog and Beth, The Fight of Their Lives, aired that November, featuring the Dog the Bounty Hunter couple celebrating when Beth was deemed cancer-free. Chapman said at the time via E! News, This could be a miracle. Sadly, their happiness was short-lived. In November 2018, the Chapman's attorney, Andrew Brettler, told Fox News that Beth had experienced difficulty breathing and was rushed to a Los Angeles hospital, where a mass was found in her throat. During an emergency surgery, doctors discovered the cancer had returned. Brettler said, It's serious, and her doctors are evaluating her treatment options. Once you find out that it's an incurable you know, lung cancer, where's there to go from there? As Beth continued to try alternative treatments, Dog kept fans updated on her condition. But sadly, in June 2019, Dwayne Chapman took to Twitter to share some heart-wrenching news. Beth had passed away following her second cancer battle. She was 51. He wrote, It's 532 in Hawaii. This is the time Beth would wake up to go hike Cocoa Head Mountain. Only today, she hiked the stairway to heaven. We all love you, Beth. See you on the other side. Who's your favorite man in the world? Mm -hmm. And who loves you more than anybody? Um, what's in here? <laughs> Chapman was understandably devastated by Beth's untimely passing in 2019. His mourning, however, was cut short by a medical emergency of his own that September. Just three months after Beth passed away, Dog was hospitalized after complaining of chest pains at his home in Colorado, with TMZ initially reporting he had suffered a heart attack. That report turned out to be inaccurate, but not too far off. Dwayne himself later announced he'd been diagnosed with a pulmonary embolism, a potentially lethal artery blockage. And I'm go going through some uh, psychological things right now, too, so that doesn't help, you know. 
Speaking with the New York Times in January 2020, Chapman revealed that doctors had recommended he stay in the hospital to receive treatment, but he refused. Instead, he said he checked himself out, adding, I pushed an orderly up against a wall because he wouldn't let me leave. They couldn't stop me. During an appearance on The Dr. Oz Show, which was teased shortly after the reality star's hospitalization, Dr. Oz didn't pull any punches about the seriousness of Chapman's condition, chastising him for ignoring care that could save his life and encouraging him to put his mental and physical health first. The doctor added, You're taking time, Bob. You aren't going to be here with the heart the way it is right now. The loss of his beloved wife and the new knowledge that he had a serious health condition to confront would be enough of a hit for anyone to handle. But unfortunately, Chapman experienced even more misfortune in late 2019. He was completely out of money. Previous shows, we chased bond jumpers, somebody out on bail. This one, we're chasing fugitives. In his January 2020 interview with the New York Times, Dog discussed his latest bounty hunting job a $1.5 million bond on a fugitive drug dealer who'd bolted from Hawaii to California, Chapman's quote, biggest bond he'd ever written, noting that he would be responsible for paying if he didn't catch the person. If the famous bounty hunter, who was also reportedly in charge of handling his late wife's estate, came up short and didn't manage to bring in the fugitive, he also faced losing his Colorado home to the bank. Conceding that he was taking a huge risk, Chapman explained that, with no confirmed TV contract in hand at the time, he desperately needed an infusion of cash. Further admitting he was broke, Chapman, whose worth was previously said to be $6 million, according to Celebrity Net Worth, indicated that his late wife's medical bills had wiped him out financially. I cannot believe that she's gone. This is not possible. I want to wake up from a dream. The passing of his wife, Beth, left Chapman feeling lost and rudderless. The final episode of his series, Dogs Most Wanted featured an interview with Chapman filmed shortly after the tragic loss. In the footage, Chapman is at a particularly low point, revealing how he'd considered taking his own life, admitting that Beth's passing, quote, paved a way for him. Chapman shared his urge to overdose on pain meds, according to the Daily Mail. However, he worried about Beth's reaction should he accelerate his journey to the afterlife. He said, I feel like if I did something to myself right now and passed away, and I got to heaven and was like, hi, honey, she would go, you dumb sh**, why would you do that? Or would she go, wow, you're here. I'll be like, of course I'm here. You left me. I'm here. So am I obligated to do that? Speaking with the New York Times, Chapman's manager, Amy Weiss, revealed that he's, quote, very lonely. She added, he's lost, but he knows he must go on and provide for his family. Indeed, Chapman, who's unfortunately also been forced to dispute rumors of his own demise during this time, opened up about his devastating thoughts on The Dr. Oz Show, crediting family friend Moon Angel for helping him. As Dr. Oz put it, choose life. She was and is and remains dog's most wanted. If you or someone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255, or text HOME to the Crisis Text Line at 741-741.